to St John's this morning for our parish Eucharist on this the fifth Sunday of Easter. We meet in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen A reading from Acts chapter 8, beginning 
Then an angel of the Lord said to him, Get up and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked him, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak. And starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. <clears throat> As they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop. And both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water. And Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched him away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself desertus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Hallelujah. In the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch with a, and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. 
My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, you, O Christ. May the words of my lips and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I like that story that uh, Hazel read to us from the Acts of the Apostles about the meeting between Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, a representative of the Queen of Ethiopia. So I thought it'd be it's good to have a look at that in a bit more depth to start off with. <clears throat> Let's start looking at the Ethiopian eunuch. Ethiopia, in this context, I discovered, was not the modern nation of the same name, but refers to areas in the south of modern day Egypt and parts of Sudan. This court official, an important and powerful man, apparently something like the Chancellor of the Exchequer was thus an African, and perhaps the first African convert. He was obviously not Jewish, but what was known as a God-fearer, a Gentile who followed to some extent the Jewish faith. Hence his trip to Jerusalem to worship in the temple. I wonder what became of him, and whether he was able to pass on his newfound faith to his influential friends when he got back home. Another person in the story is Philip, not, it seems, the apostle, but another of the same name. As we read the story, we realise he's not really acting of his own volition, but in response to a calling. First, the angel of the Lord gets him going, so that he's in a position to meet the Ethiopian on the road. And then, after baptising him, Philip is seemingly whipped away by the Spirit to other duties. Let's try and put some of that into a bit more modern context. Here we are at the beginning of the church. Indeed, of course, this is what the Book of Acts is all about, the early church as it begins. It must have been an exciting time, to say the least, the least for those involved. Exciting because they were acutely aware of the Spirit of God working in them. Exciting in that it was there was a tremendous urgency in the air. And also it was exciting, if that's the right word, because there was considerable danger in preaching the gospel of Christ. Often mortal danger. In modern parlance then, perhaps we can refer to the early church as a start-up. Just like in some ways new companies, particularly in the areas of technology and communications, are today. A small group of enthusiastic people get together around a good idea or innovative product and set out to gain influence finance and publicity, so that the area or product, the idea or product, can be widely disseminated and make its mark. That too must be exciting. A spirit of adventure is necessary to drive the project forward. There's a sense of urgency to make a mark, perhaps before others get in on the idea. And there is danger, not in this case mortal danger, but the danger perhaps of losing their savings or being found wanting in some other way if the project fails. There are, I think, some parallels, therefore, in the early church. The project is no less than spreading the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ under the influence of the Holy Spirit. There's a sense of urgency. Remember that they originally supposed that Jesus' return was imminent. 
And as I've already said, danger was involved. Some modern startups prove very effective and successful. Perhaps you think about Google or Facebook and things like that, who started, both started from very small beginnings. They rapidly become corporations, conglomerates. The initial excitement fades to be replaced by all sorts of things not necessarily connected with the original project. The lawyers, the managers, the accountants gather human resources departments formed. And perhaps individuals become less important in the corporate mentality and finance becomes the driving force. There's a beautiful and I thought quite funny example of this. Remember that lovely TV series, Yes, Minister? One episode they had a hospital that had closed uh, and there were no patients there. And so Jim Hacker thought it would save a lot of money. But of course the site needed guarding. And of course the guardians needed planning. And so now we've got a few people on site, uh, somebody needed to feed them. And so we had a few more people on site. And then of course, um, with that number of people, you need some managers, so uh, some managers, and so on and so on. You can see where this is going, built up, and they say no money at all. The whole thing was, of course, that the organisation had overtaken the original idea. Sadly, of course, perhaps inevitably, the church became a sort of corporation. We've got great big problems, for example, the indulgences whereby you were let off years in purgatory if you gave money to the building of St Peter's in Rome. Bishops became princes and so on. It's not that bad now, I'm pleased to say, but perhaps I do wonder at some point, I don't know if you've noticed, the Archbishop of York advertised for a chief executive on 90 grand a year to offer advice and be a critical friend. Well, I tell you what, I'd do it for about 45. And then I'd advise him to drop the whole idea. I fully understand the need, once any organisation grows, as the startup gets beyond the first exciting launch for management of resources, of personnel and so forth. But it is a pity, isn't it, that so often the original ideas, the original enthusiasm fades, are in danger of getting lost in corporate strap lines and loyalty to the corporation rather than to the original ideas. I know it's impossible to go back to seeing being like the early church. I feel just obey the angel of the Lord and speak truth to power. Probably too late for that. I do wish, however, that the church, or should I say the churches, could concentrate far more on matters of faith and on the layers of administration and other concerns that have conglomerated over centuries. What a wonderful startup Christ gave us and gave to the world. I wonder what he thinks of the corporations that have grown up from it. Somehow we need to regain something of that excitement of the early church, some of that willingness to talk to power. Some of that courage that people like Philip had. We can't do it as easily as an organisation. Perhaps we can do a little bit of it ourselves. We in this country have the excitement of potentially coming out of this dark period. Let's remember the exciting aspects of our faith. Get some urgency back into our prayers and worship. And live dangerously in the service of Christ. We might not come across any Ethiopian eunuchs to convert, they're in short supply in West Bible. 
But there are plenty of other ways to serve and become one of those branches of the true vine that bears much fruit. as we affirm our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one Lord, the Father, the Holy Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and can't see. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. Eternally begotten the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and ultimate, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified on the conscious planet. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So it is we offer our prayers of intercession. <laughs> Let us pray to God, who alone gives to his people the power for good. Grant, Lord, that your church, constant in faith and love, may bring forth good fruit, constantly aware of its purpose of preaching the good news of Christ. We pray for greater unity between all of her branches through the strength of Christ, the eternal, true vine. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Enlighten all in the world who desire to find the truth and lead them to those who can show them the way. Empower us to be the guide when needed. Bless all who seek and all who guide. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Have mercy on all those who have lost their jobs or their businesses in this pandemic. <coughs> Help them to regain stability in their lives and a sense of purpose as they face the future. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious be We give you heartfelt thanks for our increasing freedom from the pandemic in this country. And we pray for the peoples of the world continuing to suffer, 
especially at this time those in India and Brazil. We pray for all who suffer from whatever cause, remembering especially Chrissy, Joyce, Joy, Bill, Christine, Malcolm, Denise, Martin, Anna, Ian, and Margaret, and others we know. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord gracious hear us. We pray for the departed, that their love may be made perfect in your presence. Remembering today Alan Alkins, priest, and those who died in the crush in the religious ceremony in Jerusalem. Have pity on all who mourn their passing, that they can face the future with confidence in your abiding love. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. We offer these our prayers through Christ, the source of our life and strength. Amen. stand to share the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign.
Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things. You were sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks because in his victory over the grave, a new age has dawned. The long reign of sin is ended. A broken world is being renewed, and humanity is once again made Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave him thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave him thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so far, according to mind, his death on the cross. His perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Give us today our 
Christ had that that does community prayer. <coughs> Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We stand as we ask God's blessing as we go on our way in The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. With the power that raised Jesus from the dead and work within you, go in peace to love and serve the Lord.